Turn to 2 John. We'll read two verses of scripture to set the uh, last statement and uh, subject matter we'll be studying uh, concerning some truths that everyone should know. Uh, since this will be, by the grace of God, our last um, lesson, our devotion on this subject matter, I'm going to make a brief recap as I did the last couple of mornings. And of course, tomorrow morning, we'll have the pastor with us doing the devotion. And then on uh, Friday, we'll have someone else filling in since we're in work week and uh, things here at the office and various things that are taking place. Notice you would please that in uh, 2 John 1 and 2, it says, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. We've been speaking on some truths that everyone should know. And I believe that these are vital truths. Some of them are simple truths, but it doesn't matter if you're a saint or a sinner. Everyone needs to know these truths. And for the saint, it's uh, important to know these because it helps us with our doctrine and keep our focus and our purpose here on earth. And for the sinner, it helps to set in perspective the urgency of the hour and the truth of their eternal destination if they don't give their life and heart to Jesus Christ. We looked at the truth about the matter of salvation. There's only one way to be saved. It's not by religion. Religion's found five times in the Bible, not one time. Is it associated with salvation or how one can get to heaven? It's not in salvation. It's not in good works. It's not by keeping the golden rule. It's not by keeping the Ten Commandments. It's not by attitude, opinion, or any other uh, matter. It's a matter of putting your faith and trust in Christ, for there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved according to the scriptures. And then we found the truth about the church. I believe it'd be important <clears throat> if everybody uh, would understand the truth about the church. Today, it seems like many Christians, not all think the Lord, but it seems like many Christians have no respect for the church. And because of that, the world certainly has no respect for the church. And you've got as many shootings and stabbings and things that are transpiring across the country and the churches on an annual basis as we used to have in 20 or 30 years, three or even more decades. And so we need to come to a place where we have a healthy respect to, for the church and how we should behave ourselves in the house of God. A lot of people today have a lot of disdain and disrespect for the church, even those that have been saved and have uh, done despite to the church. Then we found also with that, that also the truth about baptism. Baptism don't save. Baptism is an outward expression of what takes place in the heart at the conversion and putting the faith and trust in Christ. And then we look very briefly at the truth about the future of the saved. Thank God we have an eternal life. Uh, we have a future, a bright future, and the heaven is our eternal destination. And so I thank God that uh, someday we have to look forward to being in heaven, to being with the Lord forever and ever and ever, and that there'll be a time where no matter what our outlook is, what our perspective is, what our uh, goals are, what kind of issues we may fight or battle in our lives, thank God someday it's all going to be over, it'll be behind us, and we shall be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. Then we looked at the truth about the lost, the damned, the those that are unsaved, and when they die, they'll spend eternity in a priceless hell. We looked at the rich man in Luke 16, 19 through 31, and the scriptures and what it had to say uh, concerning the future of the lost. And uh, I've often said that if we just roll back the gates of hell for one split second, and every single Christian born again believer, or even the lost were to hear the screams of the damned for one second, it would uh, put an urgency in the heart and the life of the believer to go out and to fully dedicate themselves to the Lord and consecrate themselves to the will of God. And certainly it would drive the sinner to the reality of their eternal damnation. But then we started looking yesterday or the day before on the truth about the second coming. Now there's a lot of people today, even Christians that don't really look for the second coming of the Lord. There's a lot of things that are transpiring. Uh, we've been preaching the second coming for 44 years and the subject matter has been preached ever since Christ's ascension. And the Bible has much to say concerning the Lord's second coming. And so today I want to just kind of wrap up and summarize if I can. I've only got about six minutes left. I'm going to try my best to get through this in this time. But let me, if I may, just lay out in a sequence of events. And uh, it's one of those things in eschatology that sometimes people say, well, really, what does it matter what you believe in the end times? Well, it means a, a lot of what we stand doctrinally. And when a person's not right doctrinally in any area of their life, 
they're going to be off in other areas of doctrine because every doctrine of the Bible supports and substantiates each other. So if you have one Bible doctrine that's off, there's going to be issues in other areas of Bible doctrine. And so eschatology is kind of the, it's the doctrine of the end times. And we have all the doctrine of salvation and the doctrine of damnation of those that are lost and the doctrine of the church and all that we've covered and many more. I've only chosen uh, seven of them to look at in this brief series of devotions. But if you're off on any of those, it literally is like having a chain link, uh, seven chain links. And if you're off in one doctrine, uh, one of those links is going to be weak and it will not support the rest of them. And so if I had a chain this morning, and uh, with seven links of these doctrines we spoke of, and we had a hundred pound weight on the end of it, if one of those links, just one, all of it can be uh, perfect in its strength and in its, uh, in its uh, purity and its form, but if one of those chain links is weak, that hundred pound weight is gonna break the chain and the chain is not gonna be able to sustain the weight. And that's the way it is with Bible doctrine. Just one doctrine that's off will damage and destroy the reputation and the uh, doctrine of Christ and what the Bible has to say. So we're looking at the doctrine of the second coming. Let me, if I may, and I wrote it down just uh, because I'm, I knew I was going to have limited time this morning to be able to go through this. So I wrote it down just so I'll get the sequence and not accidentally mix it up as I'm trying to rush through this and get through it. But let me, if I may, just give a couple of things. Uh, we find that the Lord um, will come. We believe in his second coming. He'll return from heaven. He'll his return will be personal, it'll be visible, and it's going to be glorious. Uh, we're going to see him one of these days. I've not seen him up into this point by faith. I've reached out and put my faith and trust in him. But one day, my faith is going to become sight. I'll behold him, I'll see him as he is, and we'll see uh, the glorious face of the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified body. And before he establishes his kingdom on earth, he'll come and he'll rapture the church out. And somebody says, well, the word rapture is not found in the Bible. The word rapture means to be caught out. And the Bible says, even in the book of Revelation, uh, the, John the Revelator said, and I was caught up on the Lord's day. He was caught out. And the church, the assembly, means the called out assembly. And so we find the definition of rapture throughout the scripture. I got news for you. The word missionary is not found in the Bible either. The word mission is not found in the Bible. But you find evangelists and uh, teaching and pastoring and others. And I believe that the evangelist in the New Testament is the missionary of the New Testament. But as we look at the matter, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of words that we hold to doctrine that are not specifically mentioned in the Bible, but the doctrine is there and the teaching is there. And so we find uh, with this, the Lord Jesus, he'll come, he'll call his church out. And at that time, the dead in Christ will rise. Uh, we went the other day and uh, put flowers on mother and dad's uh, graveside and cleaned up my brother and sister's uh, tombstone and my mother and dad's. And uh, one day, uh, because they had their uh, faith and trust in Christ, my sister saved at Auburn Valley Baptist Church at a youth camp uh, several years ago when she was a teenager. My brother was saved um, while he was in jail in uh, Whitfield County Jail and uh, gave his life to Christ. My mother was saved under evangelist and pastor Sammy Allen in a tent meeting in South Dalton. My dad was saved as a young man uh, in Chatsworth, Georgia. And I was concerned about their salvation for many years, but this later and finally, uh, they gave very clear uh, presentations of their testimonies. And I believe with all of my heart that one day when the shout comes and the Lord uh, shouts out his return, they're going to come up out of that grave. I believe Peggy's mother and dad's going to come up out of that grave. I believe Elvis is going to come up out of that grave. Elvis Emerson, let me uh, clarify that for those that are listening online. Uh, he'll come up out of that grave, all right? Uh, but I don't know if the Elvis you're thinking of, uh, if he was saved or not. Supposedly he was, but that's in the Lord's hand. But Dr. Garrison come up. Brother Elvis Emerson is going to come up out of the grave. Gene Blackburn's going to come up out of the grave. Uh, we find that Brother Sammy Allen's going to come up out of the grave. Brother uh, Ed Blue is going to come out of the grave. Brother Stenham Blue is going to come out of the grave. And on the list is of those that have died in the Lord, the rapture is going to take place. And thank God, the dead in Christ shall arise first. I might be in that number. I don't know. Uh, the Lord may call us home before uh, that. But if not, I guarantee you, don't be standing on my grave if I die 
of when the Lord comes back because you'll be left in the dirt. You'll fall down and it'll put you a split second behind everybody else. Well, I'm just kidding. Of course, we're all going to meet the Lord together, the Bible says, in the air. <clears throat> and so I'm glad you take a little bit of humor today and at least I know you're awake. And so that's going to take place, the rapture. And at that time, the dead in Christ shall rise and uh, will the living Christians will be caught up together to be the Lord in the air. <clears throat> no man knows the day, the time, nor the hour. Uh, we don't know it. And as I said the other day, if a man sets a date or when the Lord's coming back, you can just about guarantee, as the old preacher said, that's not going to be the, the day that the Lord returns. And then after the rapture of the church, uh, Christians are going to be brought before the judgment seat of Christ. Not the great white throne judgment, but the judgment seat of Christ, what's known as the Bema uh, seat. We're not going to be judged for whether or not we're going to go to heaven or hell. That was determined when we trusted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. But we'll stand before him and we'll be judged according to our works. Somebody says, well, I have fire insurance. I got saved. Give my life to the Lord. And I'm not going to hell. And we can sing that song, I'm not going to hell, as I mentioned the other day, and rejoice in it. But it's more than just a fire insurance. Uh, we got to understand, we don't work for salvation. That was settled by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But we are still supposed to have good works. And we're supposed to live our life for the Lord. A Christian is going to be brought before the judgment seat. We'll be judged, every one of us. Now listen to me this morning. My time's already up and I'm not done, but I'm going to get it done today. Somebody say amen now. I can hear them on uh, YouTube say it, but I can't hear you that are present this morning. Um, we are brought before the Lord and we're going to be judged according to our works. Not for salvation, not for whether we go to heaven or not, <clears throat> but according to the crowns we receive. And we'll receive crowns. And the Bible specifically mentions and references five. I don't know how many there is all total. That's all that God uh, reveals in the scripture that we'll have. But we'll receive crowns according to our works. We'll be judged according to our thought life. We'll be judged according to our attitudes. We'll be judged according to our actions will be judged according to every aspect of our lives and we will receive crowns or reward awards accordingly. I remember a, a guy by the name of Shambach. He was an extreme mm -hmm. Pentecostal in this area. And many, how many of you remember uh, Shambach, right? We've got just two or three to remember. The rest of you are too young, I guess, to remember them. And some of you are older than me. But anyway, um, he used to preach all the time. I heard him one time say on the radio, he said, now, if you're not a Baptist, you can turn your radio off because this is strictly to the Baptists. Mm -hmm. And he preached against eternal security because Baptists believe in eternal security. And then one time I heard him uh, preaching and uh, you said, why'd you listen to him preach? Because I liked to have a good laugh back in those days. And he would uh, cause me to laugh substantially, even as a young preacher. And he said one day, he said, there's going to be some of you making them by the skin of your teeth. And uh, he just had some off the wall statements that he would make. And we used to go around, he had uh, magazines he would distribute. Uh, we'd go into the store, come back out, we'd have a grocery cart and we'd take the stand, turn it upside down, shake all the magazines out and go by and, and throw them in the vehicle and throw them in the trash on the way out or whatever. You say, why? Because we didn't want anybody getting his fallacy and his heresy. And um, I'm just simply saying, where'd you get off on all that at? I don't know, but I just did. Um, but I'm going to say to you this morning that uh, we'll stand before the Lord, not because of, our, of what we uh, stood on and all just any particular area, but our whole life, our doctrine, our actions, our thoughts and deeds and everything we do. And we'll be given awards according or rewards according to our works. The rapture will usher in a period known as the, in the Bible, as a great tribulation. It's Jacob's trouble. It's mentioned in the Old Testament. And it'll be a time of seven year tribulation. In the midst of it, there'll be a fallacy of false peace toward Israel in the first three and a half years. And then if I could put it this way, all hell literally is going to erupt and take place. There'll be three and a half years of hell on earth. And uh, the Antichrist will be set up and reigning during this time. And uh, it's going to be a time when uh, the Lord is going to prepare to bring judgment upon all of the ungodly. And the, uh, the rapture will usher in uh, this period. And at the end of the tribulation, Christ is going to return with his saints, uh, those that have stood before the beam of seat. We've been saved. We've been raptured out. And uh, then uh, during the seven-year tribulation, he's coming back. The Bible said he'll come with uh, his saints. He's riding upon a white horse. And uh, he has his vesture. Let me not go into it this morning. I'm already over. Uh, but it written on his side is 
the word of God. Amen. And he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. His kingdom, he'll set up his kingdom when he returns for 1,000 years. At the end of that, there'll be a battle, the battle of Armageddon that'll take place. Uh, the Bible said there'll be blood to the horse's bridle and uh, there'll be a time of judgment and woe. God will br then bring all of the damned, all of the unsaved, all the lost before the great white throne judgment. Everyone who appears at the great white throne judgment are guaranteed hell and eternal damnation because they rejected Christ, they rejected God. And as a result of that, they'll be judged, they'll be cast into the lake of fire, Satan will be cast into the lake of fire, and then at the end, the lake of fire and all, uh, hell will be cast into the lake of fire, and then uh, it is eternity in heaven, according to Revelation 21 and 22, and it's eternal bliss from there. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the second coming and the second return of the Lord uh, to get us out of the, this sin, cursed, wicked, vile world. And I'm looking forward to the day that we can shout the victory in heaven. Um, be honest with you, we get tired down here. We uh, have to face troubles, trials. We have uh, things that transpire. We all do. And it's just part of life. Man, there's one of the a few days, Job said, and full of trouble. Anybody feels like your basket and your grocery cart's been full of trouble lately and uh, you're in a long waiting line to get checked out, uh, someday we're going to get checked out all right, but it's going to be a permanent checkout. We'll be out of this world and all of our troubles and cares are going to be done. Thank God for the truth of the second coming. And if this world knew what's going to transpire at the second coming, it'd make a difference in the way Christians live and it'd make a difference in the way sinners live because eternity is going to be forever. What we do with Christ now is the final decision for the ages. Give it a verse. <laughs> Onward to the bright before us in his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven. What a day Today may be the day. God bless you to us to get to our responsibilities.